So how about just waiting for them to leave? Who's sitting here? Waiting for that. Okay. Is, it, is that a bad idea? I mean, it... Honestly, I'm not comfortable here with the staff. I'm not. Because of what she said to you? Because of what she... And what she's currently saying to my other manager right now. You can give me the right to be a human being. I'm fine with that right. Now you can keep me from having that. If you've got all the policemen and all the jobs on your side. Hey everybody, and thank you for joining me for this part two of reviewing some body cam footage from the Spokane Police Department from April 27th of 2021. And if you didn't catch the first part of this, there is a link in the description to that first part. Just to bring you up to speed for those of you who didn't, this is regarding someone who went into a Sherry's restaurant in Spokane, Washington, Walk without a mask, just walked directly over to a table where she saw her friend and sat down where she wasn't required to wear a mask. And then Sherry's called the cops on her and tried to, is trying to have her trespassed. Uh, so this part two is going to focus mainly, uh, the cop actually, in my opinion, in this, in this part, uh, does a pretty good job of at least with uh, the, the manager of Sherry's here, uh, Heather, he does a pretty good job of trying to de-escalate with her and trying to reason with her. Uh, and then he goes inside and I don't think he does as good of a job uh, trying to reason with the customer inside the restaurant. Uh, I don't want this video to go on super long. There is going to be a part three for sure. Uh, so I don't, so I'm not going to let this drag on forever. If I get into some of where he goes back inside and talks to the customer inside, I'll play a little bit of that, but most of it will be on the part three, which will be out in the next day or two. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's just get into watching this footage. This is so fucking stupid. I'm sorry for my language. I'm sorry. Well, don't bother me. <laughs> I just want this mask thing to be done and over with. Then why are you enforcing it? Okay, that was awesome that she said that we're not coming back to the store we're not coming back here ever again and during this whole mandate when all these uh, stores in our own communities were trying to do this and treat each other treat people within our own community this way rather than reject the mandates from the governor who really can't do anything and is several hundred miles away and embrace the people in our community and treat each other well they chose to follow that uh, because of course they were threatened with extortion possibly being thrown in a dungeon uh, for not forcing their community members to wear masks uh, but this lady decided to let them know and I, that's very important to let these uh, restaurants and uh, small business owners know that they need to stand with their community uh, because they're going to get run out by these major corporations like Walmart and all these major multinational corporations are going to run out small mom and pop businesses through these mandates and things like that. And if you think the mandates are over, you're wrong. They will keep coming. Uh, but one other thing I think people need to do is rather than just tell them, I'm, you know, finish eating and give them your business that time and say, I'm not coming back here again. I think everybody in there, if you hadn't eaten, you should have not ordered and stood up and taken off your mask in protest because that's what the problem was was she didn't wear her mask walking over to the table once she was at the table and sitting with her friend it was okay for her to take off the mask but so i would have stood with her and taken stood up and made sure i didn't have a mask and i would have asked others in the restaurant to do the same to stand with a community member in solidarity against the king's mandates uh but nobody in there did that and we don't have that mentality right now because nobody wants to be seen as the one causing a problem or anything like that but it's not causing a problem when you're standing up for the freedom 
of a community member who hasn't done anything to anyone else, when you're standing up for th their ability to self-govern themselves and all of us to be able to self-govern ourselves, that's not causing a problem. That's what we're all supposed to be doing. She, obviously, if he didn't suffer, she would leave on her own. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you're going to pull that card, then it, like... I'm pulling a card? Is that <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, if the whole discrimination upon religion... I didn't pull that. She said that. That's what I'm referring to. Oh, okay. You know, because she's saying I'm refusing to serve her based off of her religion. Did she by chance see what religion was? And we're not supposed to ask about that stuff. Kind of like the dog thing, like the ADA thing? Yeah, okay. See, this bothers them. They have to follow this policy because, again, it's another one that, that the king mandated, but it bothers her that she can't ask what her religion is, just like she can't ask, you know, why do you think you need to be able to have a seeing eye dog or a, a therapy dog or whatever. She can't ask that. It really bothers her that she can't ask their religion. I know she's lying. Why can't I ask her? It doesn't matter. She's exempt under the law you're trying to, under, excuse me, the mandate you're trying to follow. She's exempt by saying that she had an exemption. So you, it even says right in there you weren't supposed to ask about what it is anyway. So just accept it and say, okay, I'm off the hook now. I don't have to worry about it. But instead, again, Heather is butthurt about being called a Nazi. So that's what this is about. And I'm just going to skip forward a little bit here because we just got a whole lot of nothing. said that you were like screaming yelling at me. Okay. I'm not sure really, really sure what to do right now. Really well, not. I can I mean I could tell you what I would do if I was the manager. And this was a business because some of the stuff could be turned into just something which is what I don't want. So, and take it or leave it. What I would do is I would just let the manager thing play itself out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just sitting there, right? Yeah. And if the regional manager comes back and says, hey, serve these people, then I'd serve them. If, if not, they're going to leave on their own. Yeah. And then it doesn't, and also it doesn't look like to other customers that like you're kicking someone out for a mask because that's oftentimes that's what people perceive yeah even though you're saying she called you a nazi it, right it was just and it's like because we didn't get like the way you were treated well and it's like we get we get shit all the time right. you know i mean i've been called a communist i've been called ever ever since this whole thing started we've been called every name in the book but right. that is where i draw the line and because like i mean i've had people straight up call me a bitch put a mask on sit down and i will still wait on you not even a big deal, but it just went, yeah. Well, that's my... Okay, so I just have to stop it here again real quick. Uh, first off, I do want to give uh, this cop kudos, at least for right now, what he's doing in this interaction. He did do a pretty good job of trying to de-escalate and trying to get Heather here to understand what the situation is and maybe she should j just let cooler heads prevail and just let things calm down. Uh, but of course she's still all emotional and she makes that statement so she just said you know you can call me a bitch and all that as long as you got your mask on basically as long as you don your ritualistic shame muzzle you can call me and be rude as you want you can call me as many names as you want but if you don't don the ritualistic shame muzzle and go over to your table and then you call me a name or be rude to me that's when i'm going to call you know this blue line gang of thugs and try to get them to remove you from unlawfully from this uh, establishment so <laughs> that's how sherry treats people uh so just keep that in mind my opinion uh, how do you want I, I i don't even know right now i don't even know you know because we've had to call officers out before specifically for the mask thing i think we did four last year you know so it's like that was kind of 
So they're used to this. Like, that's what she's just saying. They had to do this four other times last year when somebody came into their restaurant and didn't follow the king's mandates. And rather than just let them eat <clears throat> and not hassle them and not cause a problem, they went over and called in this enforcement gang and, and used them to try to intimidate people to either leave the restaurant, you know, after that little coercion attempt of, with the threat of violence uh, from the Blue Line gang here. Uh, and it sounds like it must have worked based on what she said. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that Sherry's here especially. This is something that they practice regularly, apparently, is calling on these, uh, this enforcement gang with their threat of violence to coerce their customers to do whatever they want. So, like I said, this does not look very good for Sherry's Pies and Cafe. You might want to keep that in mind if you plan on going there. Oh, we've just handled it. If they refuse to wear a mask or anything like that, we ask them to leave. Nine times out of ten, they will. Oh, I mean, yes, I know you're mad at me too. Thank you. And then, um, and then if they don't, usually it's because they've said something, you know, cussed us out, said something that was bad or whatever. We called, officer came, they left. This is my first "it's against my religion" thing, so I don't know where to go with this. Which is why I'm how about let her eat and quit causing a problem? Do you want me to hang out a little while longer or go see if they got a hold of them? The regional. Would you mind hanging out just for a little bit longer? I, I hate to take up your time. I really do, and I'm so sorry. She... <laughs> <laughs> the basically what she said there is, I really hate to take up your time. <laughs> um, but I'm realizing how crappy I'm treating my community members here, and I don't really know how to handle it. I'm really emotional. Uh, so basically, she, you know, and she's also, she's trying to create it in her mind that the, the customer inside the restaurant is a threat to justify her calling this cop out to try to remove her. Because now that he's kind of de-escalated the situation and tried to make her kind of think about things a little bit more, maybe even just by her own statements, which I pointed out how <laughs> ludicrous they are, uh, maybe she's starting to realize that and now she's trying to justify in her own mind, like, why she called him out there oh yeah will you just hang out because I, I just don't trust this lady this might blow up into something crazy so we just hang out for a little bit uh, plus it's also just another intimidation factor yeah i'm asking you to stay here and just kind of back me up a little bit you know just to make, make sure that i'm i'm perceived as an authority figure around here because I've seen some of them make a point like the old dude who was outside and he was boycotting Trader Joe's that went on for about six hours yeah yeah megaphone and all but I don't think they're gonna do it. I hope not because what have they done since before I got here yeah no I know they just sat there right yeah so I don't know I don't know Uh, well, I will say, after I'm done with part three of this series, I'm going to bring you another video. Uh, the customer inside the restaurant did call on people's rights in the Spokane, Washington area after this. And so we did show up and try to support her. And uh, it's just another glaring example of how poorly Sherry's reacted uh, to the situation. And I will show you that video when, these, when I'm done with this body cam footage, just to show you the, the complete story. And... Yeah, I think it would end up just resolving itself smoothly mm -hmm. and like a, a natural transition. I know. But she's excited to be there.
You know, and it's like most of us here, we don't we don't want to wear this shit. We don't want to do this. Okay, if you don't want to do it, then why are you? Why are you still doing it if you don't want to? I know the reason. Do you know the reason? Yeah, that's why they're doing it. It's because they're a slave to fiat currency. Look at her little mask. It's all got a little bling on it, special stitching. She's got to go out and get all this. She's got to keep earning that fiat so she can make herself feel well with all these things that she has to have. Instead of treating her community members well and not worrying about having things, instead worrying about having a community and a relationship with that community, she's worried about things. And that's what this desire to have fiat currency does to us all. Hello? Okay, so um, the officer is here. I'm actually talking with him right now. And um, he went to the table to speak with the lady. And um, she is saying that um, I screamed at her, I yelled at her, um, that um, she told me that wearing a mask was against her religion. I'm discriminating against her religion. And she never called me a Nazi or said any of those things to me. I don't know what the hell to do. Stop making a problem of it. Yeah, I'm breathing. So, and she's already spoken to the regional manager, I guess. And she's waiting for the regional manager to call her back. I don't know what I'm doing. She pulled the religion card. I don't know what to do here. Give her the exemption she asked for. That's what you can do. Brandy. 
Well, she she didn't say she told him. She told me. That oh, okay. So yeah, she told him it was against the rules. So and yeah, th this is fun. So they're still sitting in there. They come up and serve. Correct. I told Mega and Stephanie to stay with the table, especially because I think one, one of them has a tea or something. She got there first. She can have the tea. I'm good with it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll go in there. She just let me know. Okay. What you want me to tell them? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what you want me to do? Okay, I will do it. Yes, yeah, he's standing right here. You want to talk to me? Okay. All right, bye. Okay, so my general manager just talked to the other general manager at our Wandermere location. Um, they couldn't get a hold of Cody, our actual regional manager, so they think he's in a meeting. I don't know. So they, because she said the religion thing, she wants me to offer her an accommodation of getting her a to-go order outside, but we still cannot have her in the building. I think I'm going to quit today. <laughs> That's a great idea. All right. Uh, do you want me to go in there, or what do you want me to do? Um, would you mind just kind of kicking it by the front, just in case something? I'll hang out in the front. All right. Cool. See, there's that hole she has to justify in her mind calling this cop out there. Oh yeah, just in case something happens, nothing's gonna happen. The ladies are trying to eat. Unless you aggress upon her something. I mean, you already have, actually, by calling this threat of violence there to intimidate her. That's a violation of the non-aggression principle. Wait, 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 wait. So she just said, this has nothing to do with it. This is a company policy. So if the company policy was not to serve a black person or a breastfeeding mother or a redhead or people over six feet or whatever the company policy was, does that, by her statement there, does that mean that she would be uh, enforcing it trying to do these same things and actually refusing service to those people based on something that they they have no control over uh, if so then yet an, another reason one of the many on um, <laughs> these first two parts to not support sherry's cafe and pies uh, their employees apparently are order followers just like police officers and most government agents and don't really care about ethics and treating other people well but rather prefer to just uh, follow blindly follow company policy so <laughs> see how that works out for her in life and she was like well um this this is ridiculous blah blah i said ma'am i understand that i said but i did not want it to go this far 
this is getting completely out of hand. And she goes, well, you shouldn't have escalated. And I said, ma'am, the only reason that I even called anybody is because you called me a Nazi and told me I sent people to the gas chamber. And she said, well, I wouldn't have done that if you hadn't, you know, whatever bullshit you would think. But she's refusing all accommodations now. And did, did she get a hold of the regional manager? No, guys, no, um, she didn't. And um, she, she said that she, I think, called um, the help desk and the help desk said that they'll. Uh, so Heather here. Uh, she's using company policy to avoid accepting any responsibility for her part in this interaction. You know, in her mind, she's, she's justified in however she treats this customer now because it's company policy that she can do what she's doing. So, you know, that's the problem in our society. We have to stop using company policy, corporate policy, to guide our ethics and actually, you know, use our brain and use natural law, things that are available, things that are observable everywhere regardless of where you are and the time and who's in charge and use those to guide how we treat our neighbors and the people around us in our community. I got a message to Cody. Okay. So, but yeah, none of the upper managers are answering their phones. Okay. So she hasn't actually talked to anybody, I don't think. Okay. Oh, so how about this waiting for them to leave? Who's sitting there? What do you think about that? Okay. Is, it, is that a bad idea? I mean, it... Honestly, I'm not comfortable here with the staff. I'm not. Because what she said to you? Because of what she... And what she's currently saying to my other manager right now. Yeah. Yeah. So... Right. Okay. Right. Wait, wait, wait. She's not comfortable here with her? What What all of a sudden made it uncomfortable? Uncom You're the one that called in the threat of force and violence, not her. You're the one violating the non-aggression principle, not her. What, does that make you nervous that she might defend her liberty with some kind of justified force since you called in this thug to try to get her out, even though she hadn't violated any law or made any threats or anything like that? I mean, I've already stated, if I was the customer, I wouldn't be trying to eat there anymore. I would do something to kind of do what she's done here to expose how Sherry's treats their community, but I wouldn't force them to you know, serve me. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, what, why is she nervous? Why does she feel uncomfortable with this customer there? She's the one that created the entire situation. And the customer, to my knowledge, what we've seen so far, she has made no threats. None. And there's made, you know, Heather here hasn't made any claim that she made threats before the cop got there and we got to see any body cam footage. So why all of a sudden does she feel nervous? This is crazy. Like, this is what we've allowed our media and our government to do to us and program us this way that someone who's not doing anything to anyone else just because they're not complying is a threat to the situation and we need these gang members there with their monopolized force of the state there to get there to compl get them to comply it's insane So she just said, if she doesn't leave after you ask her to leave, then I don't know what to do. I'll be happy to give her her order outside. So basically, she's just giving the cop an ultimatum there. I'm going to ask you to use force to get this woman out of here. Put your hands on her. I'm not willing to do it because I know it's unethical and I can't do that, but I'm wa I want you to do it for me. Uh, so I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, this video has been long enough, and we'll just pick up in part three when he goes over and talks to the customer because there's a lot of really important stuff to go over with that. Uh, he does uh, start to use his uh, threat of force to try to intimidate her, even though he knows and acknowledges it's okay for her to stay there because she hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, so it's a really good one, and there's some really juicy stuff he says at the very end of it. So you'll definitely want to make sure you come back for part three of this. Uh, we'll be out either Thursday or Friday, so check back for that. Uh, until then, remember to self-govern.